Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's your boy Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Real Life Trading, D-O-T-C-O-M. I trust you're all doing splendid and you're ready for the weekend. Let's chat markets. SPY making a new all-time high today. And in fact, the last three or four days were some really interesting candlestick patterns. This is a candlestick pattern that is uh, quite rare and it's one that I've deemed what is referred to as a battalion of soldiers if you want to get really kind of wild and the reason i'm bringing that up i don't think i spelled that right um the first candle this is a new white soldier which is a white candle that opens and closes above the prior day black candles close and then the next candle is actually a new black crow so that was a pretty strong gap down on wednesday and then yesterday it was a new white soldier that triggered the first new white soldier so it's a three pattern almost like a morning star but it's a really strong morning star because the you know they're all just really really strong gaps and candles so anyway we were in a weekly options newsletter that we set up last week and we did make a little bit of a higher high and a higher low today we almost got stopped out i mean we got <laughs> real close real close getting stopped out so we'll move up that stop just a few pennies but i do like the candle and yeah that's pretty much it Spy's looking good. Hopefully we can continue. Got to like that candle on the weekly. Got to like that volume. Here's the Dow Jones DIA. This one was really killer. Nice candle this week. Good volume, good trend, good candle pattern. Looking for that to continue higher. Here's the IWM. She's ready to break out of this triangle. And yep, she'll probably fly up into that next target of 174.84. And of course, we also like to look at pretty often the NASDAQ ETF, the QQQ, and the Qs today, just a little bit of a lower shadow hanging out doing its thing. Interesting though, that today did end with a bullish candle because for the first like two, three hours of the day, we were just straight up wrecking stuff. Uh, Nvidia is the trade that we played officially in the room today. Mr. Blake Anderson was there and if you guys haven't seen Blake trade live, you need to be there because it's a sight to see. But yeah, doing really well. Uh, the worksheet 4.16 R's with a 44% win loss ratio. That's how it's done, folks. I'm loving it. So anyway, Blake trade Nvidia got half an R on Nvidia. The, this was the gap down. So obviously it was a black candle gapping down. It was a retest gap. We did have a lot of traders actually have some put sales on NVIDIA over earnings way down there at 230. But shout outs to Jordan and Brian, uh, Blake, many others who played NVIDIA. Black candle gapping down right below all those shadows. You know, it was a really nice retest gap. And if I you know come over here to the extended hours, you'll see this was the retest. I mean, it was just nice, clean, easy, sexy, boom, S curve, thank you. Right? And then from here, it was just all about just kind of managing and you know winning small. And that's kind of the way it played out. Now, Netflix, just as a warning, this particular stock review, as you notice, is probably going to be a little bit longer than others. Netflix was a killer trade today. So many people made real good monies on Netflix. I did take this screenshot really early this morning. You can see it was at 9.14 a.m. Um, Neil played Netflix. Tony was playing it. Chief got out for two R's. Uh, Justin Jeffrey made really good money on Netflix. I mean, everyone made money on Netflix today. It, it depends on how much you made for how well you played it because <laughs> Ricky Kadan uh, did this trade on it. This is my good buddy, really good friend. Uh, I, I think I could just call him my brother. Brother from another mother uh, played this trade on, <laughs> on Netflix. Oh man, 10 R's. 10 R's. So if you're playing, this was the one minute chart. I mean, this guy, he's an aggressive trader. He was on the cruise. You probably all seen the video where they, where they surprised me. He was one of those guys. Love this dude to death. And man, just, oh, what a trade. What a trade. Now, all of this did transpire from the afternoon swing trading class from just yesterday. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and actually hop over to that and uh, kind of talk about what we were chatting about then. And that option went from a dollar seventy five to four dollars. So when it broke down, it retested, and that was just it was a really nice move. So anyway, um, good trade on Netflix. If it gaps down tomorrow, guys, Netflix might hit three hundred tomorrow. I'm serious. If it gaps down, 
And if it doesn't gap down, that's cool. But if it takes out the low, if it takes out this low, it's game over. It, it might hit 300 in, in the day. So I am going to be looking all day long for, for Netflix puts tomorrow for an opportunity to short. And if I lose an R, that's fine. Monday it'll happen. Tuesday it'll happen. I'm going to watch it until it hits 300. I'm telling you guys, Netflix is toast. It's going to, be, it's going to go down a little bit lower. has all the signals. So I'm just going to wait. I'm going to be patient. I will lose some R's trying it. So there's that. And then what I want to do is actually take a little bit of a blast from the past and go into the afternoon swing trading class that I had on this day right here. Because what you're going to notice is so far Netflix is doing kind of what I talked about it was going to do after earnings. So let's go ahead and play that a little bit of a longer clip. Someone told me that Netflix was gapping down earlier today. <laughs> Um, I figured that was going to be the case. I still like Netflix, but it's just been doing so much for so long that at some point it has to rest. And uh, here's the analysis that I posted about, at this point, eight hours, not six hours ago. So these were the three, four boxes, so we don't have to worry about the two top boxes. We can turn those off. But it was pretty much saying, uh, the trend on the monthly is just too high to sustain buying up here. I think Netflix is going to gap down on earnings and trade higher. As long as Netflix doesn't gap down into the red zone, which it is, she'll be more bullish than bearish. Even with a gap in the red zone, I think it expects some short-term selling along with some longer distribution. So this was, uh, we can take off the two boxes up here. This is a bearish gap and go on Netflix. And <laughs> so it says mic drop. Yeah. Uh, it's at 343 and some change right now. So we're actually a little bit below. We're kind of in no man's land right now. We're right about here. So I spent about 12 hours this week trying to determine what Netflix was going to do on earnings as far as the wave rotation. And I think I got it. Type in a one if you want me to see what I think it's going to do. Here we go. Go back trade Red Hat RHT. And some of you might remember that I did draw this uh, after earnings came out. So if we go back over here to this, so here's Red Hat, RHT. Once I knew what the gap was doing, so I did not think that Red Hat was necessarily going to gap down, even though it makes sense that it was going to because it was so high. I think Netflix does something like this because it's just been an absolute powerhouse of a trend, but people are going to get hosed tomorrow a little bit at some point. So if you go into, I think we could almost plan for a candle exactly like this on Netflix tomorrow. It's going to buy, it's going to start running up. Then it's going to roll over. Um, I'm going to look for some puts at a high level tomorrow on Netflix. Go in and back trade. If you want homework, go in and back trade these five to six days on Netflix. So it says swing puts. Uh, I was planning on doing a day trade, but it depends on how high it goes and what the rollover looks like if we get one. Uh, I'm not bearish on Netflix long term. Hope everyone knows that. I just think this is a really good gap. It's only down 14%. Uh, the challenge is the 100s at 338. So, here's an interesting thing on Netflix, 338. Um, and, and Robert Falco posted some really good material on the uh, level two data, all the people buying and selling on Netflix. So here's the level two. So someone bought uh, a whole heap ton of shares, 19,000 lots at 448. Um, so they're gonna get they're getting burned a little bit uh, But yes Netflix I can almost assure you is gonna trade down into the 100 It probably will do that post market. So that's the right about here It's gonna happen real fast and I'm looking to go long on Netflix up into about here and I'm gonna look for Netflix to roll over and do something like this so feel free to take a screenshot of that. That's not necessarily tomorrow, like all that drawing. 
That's just going to be for the next few days. I'm not saying it will happen. That's just what I'm planning for. It makes sense that that occurs. Um, and realistically on the daily chart with a gap like this, because this is a gap and go, right? We haven't hit the 100 in forever. This is going to be a really good distribution for my put sailing fans, my bull put spread fans. I think you're going to get a lot of opportunity on this one. Um, I think Netflix does this, 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 that. So that's Netflix. And I do have a wager that it's going to get below $300 before earnings, which is about a month and a half. Now, if you're not in right now, probably not the best time to short. Um, you know, give it two, three days maybe of sideways movement, a little bit of rest. But I mean, if we continue lower, I do think the edge right now is bearish on Netflix. You're below all the moving averages they've crossed. You're below the 100, those cross. Here's the weekly. So you got a one black crow, new black crow candle on a weekly chart. Uh, and that's, that's a big deal. I mean, you're moving averages, right? You got a long way to go to the 50. So we're going lower on Netflix. Just be patient. You know, the last stock review was on Wednesday. And from there, I mean, that was Wednesday. You know, you're already making money on Netflix bearish. So if we trade sideways, but again, same thing. If we gap lower, uh, I do expect Netflix to go bearish. Uh, now, again, long term, I'm not saying Netflix is going to zero, but I'd love it. I mean, the, the more it pulls back, the more I'm going to like the move. Simple as that. And uh, again, here's the five minute chart on Netflix. So I played it a few different ways on Netflix, but the original entry was entry here, stop here, where it says old stop, and then peeled off a quarter of the position there, peeled off a quarter of a position there, waited all the way through this retest. Harry Potter came in and wizarded that thing down for me. And then oh, we got into an add and reduce around here. So once it started breaking down again, kind of added to the trade with this entry, the green line, uh, with the stop right here, added to that trade, lowered the stop um, to there when it did this, and then I lowered the stop where you see it now. So we got trailed out for Netflix for a small game. I do want to cover uh, some of the other trades. I did have a, a Condor that I lost on today that I lost two R's. The biggest credit spread loss that I've had in a really long time. And hey, those are going to happen. You're going to achieve, uh, you know, you're going to lose. And again, had I held on to the very, very, very last second, it actually would have worked out and would have closed out of the money. This was a 30, 29, 42, 43 iron condor. So obviously the bear call spread expired worthless. This pink line you'll see is Mr. Squiggles. And really it followed it perfectly. So I should have bought some puts trading through here just to protect it. Um, this was also the 100 simple on a weekly chart. So here's the 100 simple on a weekly. And I knew it was kind of down there. So bottom line, if I zoom in on the daily chart without any you know drawings or anything. Um, so this gap down, I knew it was a retest gap. So I bought to close the short put on the retest, knowing that I was going to have one, maybe two days to get out of the uh, long put. And it just didn't quite work out. So bottom line, I lost my margin on the bottom portion of this bull put spread. And that was a 2R loss. So kind of sucky, but uh, very, I mean, recoverable, right? Only losing 2R on that spread. Again, that's after the bear call spread one. But uh, TLT was a winner. So I had a bear call spread on TLT. That one did win. So that was a nice little, you know, chunk. And then Square took some little SQ, had a covered call on Square. That expired worthless, so that certainly helped. And obviously uh, DSW, so here was DSW. This was a trade that also a lot of traders traded. Uh, this, this setup right here was the, uh, the second trade in the afternoon that we were keeping a very, very close eye on, as you can kind of see. Nice retest gap. It was just trading sideways, and for the afternoon we were watching to see if it was going to do this. Obviously it did not, so no one really got triggered into there. But very similar to how we played it the first time, myself, Thomas Wong, a few other traders played DSW, entry was there, stop was there, and got trailed out right there for 0.87 Rs. So realistically, if it wasn't for US Steel, um, I'd be sitting at 
0.43 R's for the month, uh, which is super close to my 10 R target, but right now it's 6.43 R's for the month, which again, totally reasonable. I think I'm on pace to hit that 10. That's really been the goal. A lot of stuff happening this week, and we do have some swing trades that we can go through as well, along with just kind of the stocks that were requested. So let's go look at Micron, because Micron was requested. Here's ticker symbol MU. And Micron, I uh, got the put sale for September. My buddy Matt DeLong, uh, let me see if I can scroll up and find Matt's trade. So Matt, we had dinner with him uh, at, at his house back on Wednesday. Let me just scroll up to see what he was talking about on Amazon. Not Amazon, sorry, Micron. So he's saying at 11.05, adding some shares in my retirement account is 25% below its previous all-time high for May 2018 and grows 40% per year. So it will double its revenue uh, every two and a half years. So yeah, it's out of support. Some traders got some put sales. Some traders definitely keeping their eyes on buying low, selling high down here on MU. I am one of those. And uh, yeah, that's just gonna take a little bit of time. Other than that, uh, it's, at, it's out of support. So it should bounce here. You got the 50 on the weekly. This is the first time it's been down here for a while. I think it's a buy low, sell high. And if it closes below the support, I might buy a put or two just as a protection, but I really wouldn't be uh, horrified, mortified or terrified to get some shares on here on MU. Here's USB and USB, US Bank Corp. This is the weekly chart and it's pretty because most financials did break out of this resistance. We did kind of pull back a little bit and retest, which is nice. And I'm gonna pull up the long-term moving averages on a weekly chart, which you'll see is that we bounce off the 100 kind of nicely. So here's the daily and it's a cute candle, inside candle for the most part. Yesterday was a new white soldier candle. So realistically, if US Bank Corp has a higher high on Monday or Tuesday, I would expect it to just slowly keep grinding. It looks good. I like the breakout. Uh, here's the long terms on the daily and you're above the 200, so it looks pretty nice. Here's GLP, and this is Global Partners. GLP, what's cool about this one, my buddy Peter threw this one my way, and I really do like this breakout. So here is the breakout on Global Partners. You can see that nice lower low, really good consolidation in here. Nice little pop the last two or three weeks. So this one does have a good trend and might have about another 10% move left on it into 2220. I think that's a really strong possibility, especially with the daily chart. A little bit of a lower volume stock for sure, but you gotta like this candle. And if it starts making some higher highs and higher lows, I think 22 is a no brainer. Had a lot of traders ask for TCEHY, Tencent Holdings. And this one obviously been getting a little bit shredded recently, but you gotta love the last three days. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> so Tencent, um, been waiting around for this one for a while to get a nice buy low, sell high. So TCEHY, huge company, 400 billion plus market cap, one of the biggest companies that no one ever talks about. This was June 27th, so we're talking almost two, year, two months ago. And I said, next longer term buy spot. Nice little circled area. This row is getting in pretty much $40 even. And you'll notice we trade right down to that phenomenal price. Nice fib, nice moving average, nice everything. So it triggered at open three days ago on earnings. And you, <laughs> sweet, really cool. So I love it. Uh, again, here's the weekly off the 100. So again, 10 cent for me is a little bit, is a longer term, like a three to five year play three to five year perspective. It's gonna take some time for it to grind higher, but for those, of, there's a lot of real life traders who have shares of this one, and I think that's a pretty smart play, but that's just my analysis. Got two more that were requested, and I'll look at some swing trades that we're in. Here's TEVA Pharmaceuticals, and uh, yeah, that's a really good that's a really good move. I think this setup right here was for a day trade. So if you're in TEVA, that's a really nice looking candle. There's a lot of ways to play this one. This would be kind of like a conservative stop. Conservative. So that would be the far right. <laughs> so, I'm just kidding. Conservative stop, 2119. And this would be your liberal stop. <laughs> um, 23, 24. So obviously uh, a little bit, little bit tighter. I mean, it's a nice one. So anywhere in between this general area would be pretty. Here's the weekly. Uh, I do like the 21 just a little bit better because the risk reward 
uh, is kind of tight right here, but I think longer term, this is a fun one. I mean, Warren Buffett loves it. Big generic pharmaceutical company. 100 simple is going to be a big target. It's going to smack its head against that pretty gnarly like and chop around for a while. So I would probably go with the tighter stop and just play this one aggressively for whoever is and was requesting it. So something like this, yeah, 24.52 by 23.24. Just a nice little quick move uh, on that as it kind of pops higher. It does look really nice though. So feel free to keep your eyes on that one. And last but not least, as far as the request is Boeing, ticker symbol BA. And Boeing today, I got to show you the analysis on this one. I mean, this was just again from yesterday's afternoon swing trading room. Look at this bounce off the 200. Look at that gap and go today. Guess who had two fingers and did not play Boeing today? This guy. In fact, when looking on the one minute chart, even Blake Anderson could have played this. <laughs> even, even Blake could have taken that trade. Look at this one minute. Look at this. Look at that. Look at this candle. Oh, man. Cheryl says, I'm kicking myself. For getting out last night, could have made more. Yeah, I mean, like I said, that's the that's where that plan comes into place. How much do you want to make? How much do you want to hold for? Maybe you could peel off a partial. You know, I mean, I because you've got to remember it is Boeing. So if it's gapping up after hours, especially bouncing off a good support, I mean, I'm super happy you made money on it. Let's not complain about that by any means, but. Uh, don't mind that. Just doing a little bit of back trading again on Boeing. Been I've been back trading a lot lately. Okay, save. Make sure it's saved. So anyway, 200 simple moving average. Nice bounce on Boeing. And yesterday, I did mention to some traders, Neil and a few others, if you want to do some put sales, um, you could possibly and can, you could consider some uh, put sales down there. So you have a gap and go, good volume off the 200, you're in a distribution phase. You're gonna get a little bit of a pullback tomorrow, but play Boeing bullish uh, up until about 360. This We're in a channel, so buy low, sell high, in and out, boom, 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 bing, bong, bang. Here's the hourly time frame. that all rhyme, and if you turn off the extended hours, you have a retest gap on the hourly. So if it pulls back, Cheryl said, is it worth getting to again? Absolutely. Yes and yes. Uh, let it pull back into about 340-ish, uh, buy the dip, and keep playing Boeing until about 360-ish. We got another 20 points or so to go on that one. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, here's the thing. When you get over, I mean, a few dozen traders who they just pour over the charts, look at analysis, ask questions and just do tons and tons of research, you're going to get analysis like that. It's worth being in the room, even if it's just for a month of your time, just to learn some new things and get some new takeaways. That analysis on Boeing was literally spot on. I mean, oh boy, the low of today, 341.67, and that's a really good pop up to about 348. That's seven points, right? That's seven grand if you bought a thousand shares. I mean, it's a really good gap. So I do think Boeing can continue a little bit higher. I like to move on that one. Let's just go through some of the swing trades. Cause again, I know this is gonna be a little bit of a longer stock review. Um, so first of all, Blue Apron, APRN. So this is the trading journal. And I do have a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, cool gift in just a moment I'll share with everybody. So Blue Apron, I'm trying to see if this is gonna be a double bottom off of some of this support. Hoping it is. I said that uh, we'll find out this week if this is gonna work or not. Still so another inside a week. So it looks like it's gonna be next week because that is a perfect inside candle. So you have three inside weeks. So two inside weeks in a row, that's gonna be fun. So we'll find out what happened on the Blue Apron, but we're in on that one. Here's IQ, so we're in some puts on IQ. And yeah, it kind of retested, recovered. I'm just gonna give this one some time. Now, Robert Falco, Justin Jeffrey, Ben, a few of the traders did already take their profits on IQ, which is great. Why not? I mean, again, at open. On Wednesday, we're nicely profitable on those particular puts, but I'm just gonna give this one a little bit more time, and then there's September puts. I'll give it two, three weeks just to see what IQ does, and then I do kind of expect IQ to go a little bit lower. 
We're also in Lending Club, ticker symbol LC. And Lending Club, uh, we'll find out. Uh, here's the long-term moving averages. Obviously played it off of these two hammers. And I'm going to make a note in the afternoon swing trading room today that if we don't make a higher high or higher low you know, by next early next week, I'm just going to cut, cut bait on that one and move on. Then we got BIIB, Biogen, which just is not, which is refusing to go lower. So we're probably going to get stopped out of Biogen next week for a little bit of a loss, nothing too um, gratuitously awful, hopefully, but you know, that's a bearish trade. And then we had sale S A I L that we're in bullish on. So hopefully that can pop with volume. We will see. Uh, and then we got uh, S P Y. We already talked about that one. Here is another one. So this one is going to be R H I. And a lot of traders looking at some puts or looking for a really fast bearish trade on this one, mostly because you had a tweezer top right here. Perfect tweezer top, in fact. So keeping a real close eye on this thing, probably going to be a fast counter trend trade in and out, moving on, but certainly watching RHI very closely. And then here's APPN. APPN uh, was up a little bit today, had a nice little lower shadow. I love that setup. 36.45 by 34.25. That could be cool. And then we're going to be canceling UXIN, I believe, this afternoon. Uh, yep, probably just cancel that one and go find something else. And here's the gift, a surprise, whatever you want to call it. If you have not got a chance to notice this yet, a lot of traders wanted um, copy, you know, copies of a trading journal to kind of help them with their trading. So this particular journal is one that we share only with our subscribers in the trading room. But if you want your own, we have built you one for free. Many of you might have noticed that we've updated the website a little bit. So if you want to hop into the Real Life Trading D-O-T-C-O-M website, I'm spelling .com phonetically. You can notice here on your dashboard, the trading journal right there. Click it, it's entirely free, and you have the ability to um, you know, create your trade setups. You, know, you can do stocks, options, futures, forex, cryptos. So that is there, you're welcome to play around with that. Obviously it's gonna be a work in progress, one to build, one to grow, but we're just doing our absolute best to enrich lives. So thank you all for being a part of the journey. I will see you all later next week. Hope you had an absolutely splendid week. Two weeks left in August, and then the Real Life Trading Retreat will start the first week of September. That's gonna be killer. Expect tons of videos and pictures from that. All right, team, I'll see you later. Until next time, love life, live life, trade it, bye. Did you know most adults love hitting the subscribe button? That's right, that button right there. That's the subscribe button. And of course, if you like this video, you're gonna love that video. You're awesome.